Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia, and welcome back to another episode of the Zhuge Liang Northern Expedition lore series as we continue with episode 6, titled The Hasty Retreat. Now in our last episode, we covered Ma Su's foolish decision to encamp his army atop of a mountain south of the town of Jieting, when Zhuge Liang's direct orders was for the army to occupy, fortify, and defend the town of Jieting. This decision naturally gifted Zhang He an easy victory at Jieting as he was able to effortlessly cut off the Shu Han water supplies by encircling the mountain. Now even in this dire situation, had Ma Su been able to maintain the army's morale, the defeat perhaps could have been salvaged as Zhuge Liang's main forces were just one day away. But with the army no longer trusting their unproven, overly ambitious, and bookish commander, the Shu Han army collapsed, and the only thing preventing a complete disaster was Wang Ping's 1,000 troops that had remained within Jieting, as Wang Ping would eventually be able to break through Zhang He's encirclement to free the entrapped Shu Han army, as they would then hastily flee south toward Zhuge Liang's main force. Now, when Zhuge Liang had first heard about Ma Su's defeat, he did not rush toward Jieting. As instead, he halted his army to rest and set up defensively, as he knew Zhang He's pursuing forces would not be far behind once Ma Su would rejoin them. And indeed, not long after Ma Su's fleeing forces regrouped with the main army, Zhang He also appeared in the horizon. Then with his rested army, Zhuge Liang charged Zhang He's forces, which were a bit disorganized from their overzealous pursuit. And at the end of the day, Zhang He was beaten back as the Wei forces retreated back to Jieting to regroup. But Zhuge Liang could no longer try to retake Jieting, as not only was Ma Su's unit so scattered and demoralized, news had arrived that not long after Zhuge Liang departed from Shangbang and left General Gao Xiang behind with a bare-bone army, Guo Huai sallied out and crushed Gao Xiang. Now at risk of being sandwiched between two Wei forces, Zhuge Liang had to retreat, as the first northern expedition was essentially over at this point, as Zhuge Liang now had to play his cards right to limit his losses and try to maximize his gains. In terms of limiting losses, his army of 100,000 was still scattered all across the battlefield in the west, Zhao Yun and Deng Zhi were still struggling against Hao Zhen's forces in the Baoxie Path, as they had not received any news of the events out west, and with Cao Rui positioned in Chang'an with the Wei main army, Zhuge Liang needed to get words to Zhao Yun to retreat before it's too late for them. Out west in Longxi, Zhuge Liang still had a detachment blocking the Longxi commandery from joining the battle. They also now need to retreat before Zhang He and Guo Huai joined up to cut them off. Lastly, Gao Xiang's defeated force and the separate armies besieging Mount Qi Castle all needed to find the main army, as a continued siege is now meaningless with the full army in retreat. In terms of maximizing gains, Zhuge Liang started to force migrate the local population, as manpower was Shu Han's biggest weakness by far, as the population of the Kingdom of Wei was at least four times greater. In addition to the local populace, one of the key gains from this campaign was the defection of a young officer named Jiang Wei, who will soon replace Ma Su as Zhuge Liang's next protege. But despite Zhuge Liang's best intentions, executing these plans while at risk of being cut off by a pursuing army would be very difficult, as pretty much all of the scattered army units, including Zhuge Liang's main army, would go on to suffer heavy losses in terms of both troops and supplies during their retreat, as many of the previously surrendered territories now turned on the Shu Han forces, as it became evident that Wei had won the day. The only unit that would end up not suffering any losses would be Zhao Yun and Deng Zhi's diversionary army, as Zhao Yun personally led the rearguard against Cao Zhen's forces, and despite his old age and being massively outnumbered, Zhao Yun was able to keep Cao Zhen at bay long enough for his troops and supplies to orderly retreat out of the Baoxie path, 
before returning himself. Now, a cost of this retreat was that Zhao Yun had to burn and flood portions of the Baoxie Path to prevent Cao Zhen from pursuing their armies, and this will play a role in future campaigns for the North. As for Zhuge Liang's grand plan to steal the local population, due to the chaotic conditions of the retreat, at the end of the day, only a few thousand families ended up being relocated. And once back in Hanzhong, Zhuge Liang was finally able to take stock of everything that had happened and started assigning blame for the failures of the first northern expedition, starting with himself, as he would lower his own rank by three levels, from prime minister to the general of the right. But in terms of actual duties, he would retain the duties of the prime minister, as his own demotion was largely a symbolic gesture for his own mistake in entrusting Jie Ting to his man, Ma Su. Then for Ma Su, who had already been stripped of all his positions immediately after the Battle of Jieting, Zhuge Liang would show no mercy, as Ma Su and his two subordinate officers in Zhang Xiu and Li Sheng would all be executed in front of the entire army for their failures in the defeat at Jieting. Now, as an interesting side note, Chen Shou's father, who was the army advisor for Ma Su, was also sentenced to Quinxing, or the shaving of one's head, as he had failed to advise Ma Su properly. Of course, this is interesting, mainly because Chen Shou would eventually grow up and become the author of the Records of the Three Kingdom, which is the primary source for much of the history of this period. Now, aside from these punishments, General Huang Xi, who also went along with Ma Su's plan at Jieting, would also be stripped of his command, and advisor Li Miao would end up exiled back to Chengdu after trying to argue with Zhuge Liang in favor of sparing Ma Su's life. And at the end of the day, the only person who would receive an award for the first northern expedition would be General Wang Ping for following orders and for his bravery in rescuing Ma Su's forces even as Ma Su abandoned his post and ran first at the first sight of trouble. And it was for his performance here that Wang Ping would be given the command of the Wudang Feijun, or the Nanman elite troop unit that was gained after the southern campaign. Zhao Yun, who performed valiantly, was also given praise by Zhuge Liang and recommended for a promotion to the emperor. But Zhao Yun turned down the promotion, as he believed that a defeated campaign should not result in any promotions. Instead, Zhao Yun volunteered to follow in Zhuge Liang's footstep as he gave himself a demotion. Feeling bad for Zhao Yun, Zhuge Liang tried to award the winter clothes and supplies that Zhao Yun had saved during his retreat directly to Zhao Yun, but Zhao Yun also turned this down as he would tell Zhuge Liang to reward these to the troops instead before next winter to help rebuild their army's morale following this defeat. As for the Wei side, the shock of the first northern expedition will lead to huge overhauls of the western command structure, as Sa Ho Ma would be removed as the general of the west in favor of a much more experienced Cao Zhen. Guo Huai would end up moving all of the Yong province troops west towards the Mount Qi path, as he would personally never again leave the Yong province in his lifetime, as he remained vigilant to future attacks. In addition, because of the failed attempt from the Mount Qi path and the fact that Zhao Yun had destroyed much of the Baoxie path during the Shu Han retreat, Cao Zhen now firmly believed that Zhuge Liang's next attempt would have to come from the Chen Chang path, as Generals Hao Zhao and Wang Sheng would be sent to the fortification at Chen Chang, which was located at the end of the Chen Chang path, to fortify the outpost with 1,000 additional garrison in preparation for this potential future attack. All in all, the first northern expedition was Shu Han's best chance at making material gains against Wei, as the entire Yong province was almost won if only Zhuge Liang had entrusted Jie Ting to someone else, or if Ma Su would have been able to summon enough courage to stall for just one more day. But history has no what-ifs, as with Shu Han's intention now clear, 
Wei will be ready for all future attempts. And with that, our episode here also comes to an end, as we'll continue next time to cover the second Northern Expedition, which happens almost immediately after the first Northern Expedition, as a rare opportunity out east presented itself with Sun Quan's massive victory over Cao Xiu at the Battle of Shiting. So hopefully you all enjoy this episode enough to hit that like button to help support the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!